Welcome to the uh, virtual uh, artist talk for Gnomes of Port Moody. I'm the gallery manager, Janice Cotter. And before we start this evening, I'd like to express our gratitude to our board of directors and our longtime supporters, the city of Port Moody, the province of British Columbia for their uh, community gaming program funding, and the uh, Government of Canada through the Canada Summer Jobs Program, as well as supporters Peller Estates. I'd also like to take a second and thank our 2021 gallery sponsor, Edgar Developments. Um, for each exhibition schedule, we select concepts or themes for the year. In 2021, it's been all about stories. Uh, the artist story, the story of how the body of work developed or what it represents. But for Norms of Port Moody, the artists took it even further, creating an actual story about the gnomes and uh, then creating artwork to fit the story. Tonight, David Carey and uh, Michelle LeBlanc will tell their story about the creation of the exhibition Gnomes of Port Moody. David Carey is a photographic artist based in Port Moody, BC. Carey holds an MFA in photography from Bard College, New York. He has participated in several solo and group exhibitions, published a children's book, and has had his photographs featured in Photo Life magazine. Michelle LeBlanc is a Winnipeg-based artist with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Université de Moncton, New Brunswick. Over his vast multidisciplinary career, Michelle has worked as an exhibiting artist, graphic designer, teaching artist, children's book illustrator, tech and technical, illust pardon me, technical illustrator for Bristol Aerospace, production coordinator and visual effects artist. Um, this evening, I would like you, oh, I will stop the screen share now. I would like you to welcome our exhibiting artists, David Carey and Michelle LeBlanc. Um, you can um, turn your microphones on now, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Um, David's with us from Port Moody and Michelle is with us from Winnipeg. So has a two hour time difference. How are you this evening, gentlemen? We're great. We're great. Anxious. How's the weather, Anxious in, and great. How's the weather in Winnipeg, Michelle? Uh, <laughs> today, it rained a little bit this afternoon, but it was a nice day. It's warming. It's, it's getting a cooler, but it was 20 degrees. I went for my walk this morning. Everything was fine. Okay. <laughs> we, we had another beautiful day here, so we've enjoyed a little bit longer uh, summer. Um, so this evening we have uh, the film that our communications coordinator, our marketing coordinator, Caitlin Hill, had um, uh, recorded and uh, you've had a chance to see it. And now I think we will play it for everyone and um, give them a chance to hear your story and then we can talk about it. Uh, people can post questions in the comments, the chat, and uh, we'll have a discussion afterwards. Does that sound okay? Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna share screen on that and we'll then we'll all turn our cameras and uh, microphones off and you'll be able to enjoy the video. So here we go.
Well, hi everybody. Uh, my name is David Carey. I'm a local Fort Moody photographer, and I worked with my friend in Winnipeg, Michelle LeBlanc, uh, to put together the show of the Gnomes of Fort Moody. The Gnomes of Fort Moody, I just want to talk a little bit about how this project all began. And a few years ago, I felt very surrounded by gnomes. My wife had gone out, got out to the store and bought a number of gnomes to put on our condo balcony. And she also bought quite a large one from Thrifty's at half price. And it stood about three feet tall and was fully clothed and had a long white beard and um, very realistic looking. Uh, little wooden hands, it looked a little bit spooky. But anyway, um, when the grandchildren came over to visit us, they were absolutely fascinated with the gnomes, and particularly Moody. And my granddaughter, uh, Seba, liked to take uh, Moody, we named him Moody, by the way, um, take Moody for a little walk. And uh, so actually Moody was taller than she was in those days, and she would take Moody by the hand, and Moody would immediately fall over, as he always did, because he's very unstable. And she would drag him around from room to room, and that was how Moody got his exercise. But um, just seeing how interested my grandchildren were with the gnomes, I began to think, wow, could I do some kind of photographic project based on gnomes? Yeah, so I uh, decided I'd better go out and do some research on gnomes, so I, I went out looking for a really uh, good book on gnomes, and found the definitive uh, gnome book um, called Gnomes, published by Abrams, New York. And I read through it, and it was a, it's a beautiful coffee table book, and full of illustrations, and every fact you'd ever want to know about gnomes. Gnomes can live for 400 years. Um, gnomes are seven times stronger than a man. Gnomes do ultimately get married, and they, when they have children, they always have twins and the children stay with them for a hundred years and then they move out on their own. So at that point I began to think, um, what, what would my theme be for this gnome show? And I gave it a lot of thought and I eventually settled on the idea that the theme would be that the gnomes living around Port Moody had lived in the forest for hundreds and hundreds of years and after a while, I got really tired of being in the forest, and they, they saw this up-and-coming community, Port Moody, and all the fun activities associated with it, and they really wanted to be involved in that. So at, at that point, I wanted to go and check out, like, where would I put these gnomes in the community? So I thought of a number of places, Sassamat Lake, I could, uh, the gnomes could be hiking the trails or fishing from the dock or be on the beach. Um, they could be at a local pub, they could be at Rocky Point Park, and, uh, or they could be right here in the center um, taking a pottery lesson, it would be perfect. So all those ideas went through my mind. And uh, when I was thought of the photographs themselves, I didn't want to be putting ceramic gnomes, garden gnomes in the picture. So I wanted something um, a little more imaginative. So, I thought of the idea of possibly getting someone to draw the gnomes and color them and then I would embed those in background photographs of Port Moody. But I had no idea if that concept would work at all, how you know would it look natural. And so I thought I'd do a quick little test from the book. So I took one page of the book, photographed it, and then in Photoshop I extracted out the gnome and I put him in the picture of the mushroom. So that was the first test photograph and played around with it and found that I actually could make it work quite successfully. And um, yeah, so that, that encouraged me to keep going with the project. The only downside was I can't draw gnomes. I have no talent for that. So I thought, who in the world could I get to draw gnomes and color them for me? And no name came to mind. So I dropped the project for two or three months. And then one morning I was meditating and I got the idea, why don't I talk to my friend in Winnipeg, Michelle, who's an artist and actually has illustrated children's books in his career. And I hadn't seen Michelle for a while because I'd moved out to Fort Moody from Winnipeg about six years earlier. But I thought, you know, it might work. So I, uh, and the other thing was in Winnipeg, um, we were both doing art projects and 
I always wanted to do an art project to collaborate with Michelle on this art project, but it just never worked out. Okay. But anyway, so I contacted Michelle, and um, to my delight, he agreed to draw the gnomes for me. So that's kind of where the, the adventure all started. Having known David Carey and his work in photography for many years, I knew it would be an ideal fit for a collaboration on a project like the Gnomes of Port Moody. Gnomes really do exist, you know, as you can see in the Gnomes of Port Moody show. Picasso once said, everything you can imagine is real. Okay, now I just want to talk about my current photography process in general. I, for many, many years, I worked with film cameras and um, then digital came along and I converted myself to digital. And I found that kind of an exciting move for me because um, I was able to be more imaginative and fanciful with my projects. And one of the things I love to do in recent projects is uh, photograph an object in one context and then move it to a new environment. And all kinds of interesting things in alchemy happen when you see the object in its new environment. So I did a project recently on um, the cabins at Finn Slough in uh, Richmond. Like many artists before me, I was fascinated by this. It's kind of the last sort of fishing village that's right on the water in British Columbia. And I, the cabins are absolutely fascinating. And been painted many times and photographed many times and each cabin is, is kind of a little, can be a little bit ramshackle and it's been added to through the years or modified or patched and the cabins sit on a maze of wooden beams going in all different directions and many of the fishermen uh, have collected found objects from the sea and covered the sides of the cabins with these objects so it's really really interesting so I photographed the cabins uh, at Finslu, and then in Photoshop I extracted them and then I embedded them in photographs uh, around my condo and so I had a cabin in the living room on the floor, I had a cabin sitting on a bookshelf, I had a cabin on the couch, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, and in the clothes dryer and it's kind of interesting if you look at the one that is on the shelf so the, the cabin becomes an art object it's, it's a sculptural object because it's been isolated from its background and you can examine it up as if it's a work of art and look at all the intricacies of the, of the structure and being that it's separate from its distracting environment it's quite interesting to to perceive as that kind of an object the other um uh, thing that I've been interested in oh, for a very long time actually is anything miniature and in the Finn Slu project it turns out the cabins become miniaturized when they are placed in my condo but I did another project called bookworms and um, bookworms are tiny shy creatures that live in books and they read the stories in the books and then they build contraptions or houses or constructions based on the theme of the book so for example, I inherited an antique book from my mother on music and the bookworms um, built um, miniature chairs and miniature musical instruments at a miniature stage where a music ensemble could play and those are embedded right in the book and I love working with those miniature things. In general, I love working with Photoshop. It's um, it's very, it's very fascinating to me, and when I'm extracting objects, it's uh, basically to extract an object in Photoshop, I'm basically painting over it with the mouse and going around its edges and creating a new object, and I find it very soothing, and it's like working in a coloring book. It's, it's a great feeling. So that's the stage of selecting is fairly straightforward, but the harder part is then integrating it into the new environment and that's more challenging. And I had that same challenge with the gnomes. And I find uh, certain things I've learned through the years how to make objects look more natural in their new environment. 
One is to, if I'm moving it into a subject of a bright sun, there'll be shadows in a lot of the objects. And so I have to match, create new shadows for the gnomes and their pointed hats and make sure those shadows line up with the shadows in the scene. The other thing I can do in Photoshop is if the colors of the gnomes uh, clothes are at all in conflict with the colors that are in the receiving environment, there is a way in Photoshop to shift the colors of the gnome clothes to make them match with the colors in the background. So that's very useful. And the, the final step I did in the gnome project is once the gnomes were placed and everything was done, I applied uh, what's known as a filter, Photoshop filter, and it kind of generally posterizes everything in the image, the gnomes and the background, gives it a more uniform feel. Now if we want, we can have a look at uh, some of the photographs close up. So uh, looking at the mushroom, um, this is significant to me because it was the first one. And uh, as I mentioned previously, that was my test case. Would it really work to put an embedded drawing in a digital photograph? But anyway, I thought the mushrooms might be an interesting place for gnomes to hang out in the forest. And uh, from the book I read, it turns out mushroom, gnomes love mushrooms so much that they have them for breakfast almost every day. And, uh, okay, and then this one, when I'd be out for hikes uh, around the area, I was always looking for scenes that, that I could place the gnomes into. And I, I was hiking them around and I wanted a place, a logical place where the gnome council might meet. And as I was walking down the trail, I saw this big burnt out log and thought that would be perfect for the council to sit while I made their decisions. So I focused on that one. If you've uh, walked around the trail around Sassamon Lake, you might remember this tree that was leaning slightly over the path. And for the sake of the gnome, so this gnome is doing a, us a big favor, he's holding that tree up. Uh, from falling while we get help to put it back to where it should be. And, but photographically, I have to confess, I added a little more slope to it to make it more dramatic. So, but he's doing an excellent job of holding that tree up for now. And in this one, so the gnomes are helping out with the reconstruction of the Port Moody Library and um, the, the civic offices. And these particular gnomes lived uh, in the forest very close to where that construction was. And they had listened quite a while to the, the ongoing noise of the construction. And I felt it went on an awfully long time to finish that construction. And because they had to volunteer once a month in the community, they jumped at the chance of helping out with that project to kind of speed it up. So um, they, they were very eager to help with that. Now, this picture um, talks a lot about the uh, process that Michelle and I used because we were in different cities in, in developing this project. From the beginning, we had to establish a system to transfer my drawings to him and establish a file name in convention for the large amount of samples that we would be sending back and forth. My job was to create colorful gnomes with as much of a believable life as possible. I had to be mindful of the desired body position to fit the scene of his photographs and add as much expression through the hands and facial expressions. I would first send my pencil drawings for David's approval to make sure that he would fit the choreography of the scene in the photograph and then after his approval, I would supply the final color drawings. So then I wanted to place the gnomes in um, Skytrain. And the reason I wanted to do that was when we first moved here, there was no Skytrain to Port Moody at all. And we watched in the next few years, the development of the Skytrain, which actually fascinated me. And so for the very first train that ran to Port Moody, I wanted to be on it. And I made a point of being on it. And I was at the front of the train and giving me the fact that I was driving the train. So quite exciting. Coming from the prairies, I don't know, Skytrain's very exciting. So anyway, I thought maybe the gnomes would like to do that. 
and uh, so I placed them in that location. And um, here, just showing that you know from Port Moody, you can get to anywhere via the sky train. So this particular gnome, he's studying the, the routes, which were a little tricky for us in the beginning, but fine now. Well, this guy's making a mad dash for the open door to uh, keep going. So, so this uh, was taken in the Gallery Bistro, which is right in the Heritage and Arts uh, District of Old Town, Port Moody. And this, unfortunately, has burned down since. So it's kind of a memory of, uh, we spent a lot of time going there, love it. We sure miss it now. And here the gnome is, uh, this is one of the very earlier pictures I took too. This is uh, downstairs in a ceramic studio of uh, Pomo Arts. And uh, this fellow is doing a pretty good job of keeping that jug centered without it flying off as it can do. So life in Port Moody is uh, more than work, it's, you know, fun and a bit of work. Here, the gnomes are shopping in their favorite store, looking for mushrooms, of course. But um, it's also, it sure beats foraging in the forest for all your food, so they quite enjoy going to this store for uh, the shopping exercise. And here, they're enjoying the Port Moody Library. A lot of, a lot of really great books in that library. Here are uh, more fun activities that the gnomes participated in. This particular picture, um, there were two kind of scenarios that I had Michelle work on in illustrating. And the first one is where the position of the gnomes that I would tell them about was quite prescribed in that there was no um, flexibility for him to use his imagination. For example, one of the gnome fishing that's pretty set. The gnome will be in the chair, I'll be holding his fishing rod. And really, M Michelle's only chance to be creative would be or maybe an expression on her face. Um, in this particular picture, all I said to Michelle was, you know, could you put a gnome standing in front of the fence? And that's all I said. So if Michelle had a lot more uh, opportunity to be creative here and he probably enjoyed it a little bit more. And to my surprise, he came up with this uh, bouncer gnome, which I, when I first saw that, I just laughed. It's just absolutely hilarious, and it just makes the picture. But um, yeah, I'm sure he enjoyed having a little more freedom in what he could create for the gnomes. And here the gnomes are having fun at White Pine Beach. And just to make a comment, this was taken pre-COVID, so there were no restrictions and distancing. But um, yeah, they're having fun, really enjoying this day. Busiest day of the year at the lake. Hard to get parking, um, but that doesn't bother gnomes. They don't drive cars, so they had no trouble. And if you have, if you're in the gallery and you've got really sharp eyes, you can try and find the fourth gnome, which is in the picture. He's getting ready to go swimming and you can see if you can find them or not. So just to mention that the gallery has framed three of Michelle LeBlanc's artworks. Um, they're beautiful artworks, they look great framed. And also you can come in, when you come in, you can look through the binder which has all his uh, uh, original artwork and um, beautiful, beautiful picture. So have a look at that when you come in. For this particular picture, um, I took my granddaughter's chair out to Sassamat Lake and placed it on the fishing dock and then stood back and took pictures of the chair, empty chair with the water behind it. People looking at me very strangely, wondering what I was doing. And then when I got home, I asked my wife to come out behind the condo and hold a fishing rod while I took a picture of the fishing rod, which I then placed in the, the picture. This particular one, the old swing set before it has been replaced since then, but um, the book, um, Gnomes by Abram Publishing, indicates that when gnomes have a problem, one of the ways they solve a the problem is to go and swing, and it's very soothing while they think and try to come up with an answer to their issue. So this, prob this fellow is probably um, trying to solve a problem. This guy is just having fun, I think.
thank you all very much for coming to the artist tour and uh, I hope you can come out to the gallery to see the show in person. And just a reminder that uh, all the artist proceeds for the sale of the photographs will go to share in the Tri-Cities area. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I'm going to invite the artists to come back. David's back, Michelle's back. So um, it was nice to see the video again. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, oh, for sure. Um, there's quite a few comments. I'm going to uh, just check and see if we have any questions here and uh, I, I do have some questions for you so while we're just give me two six here okay so uh, the one first thing I wanted to to actually talk to you about is that uh, you two have been friends for many years since long before you moved out to uh, Port Moody, David, and uh, you were living in Winnipeg and knew each other. Um, how did it uh, feel being artistic collaborator collaborators for the first time? Well, I thought it worked really well. We, we had never worked together, but we worked. I felt we worked very efficiently and uh, we, we had certain rules set up to begin with about naming conventions of files and we both stuck to the rules quite well and did what we were supposed to do without too much confusion. So I thought, I thought we worked uh, very efficiently together and yeah, it was, it was different working with him rather than just, you know, palling around with him, but, but it was a great experience. Michelle, what did you think of it? Well, I, I really liked it. Uh, the thing was, is that, you know, uh, we can't forget that it was COVID time, right? Uh, and uh, and uh, to me, I, I was just busy doing my art anyway. So uh, this was a good opportunity to stay connected uh, and also stay connected with you, David. And, uh, you know, we could work, work, uh, work a project together uh, during this time. And, and it was, it was very, uh, it was very nice to do that, you know, because I, I was concentrated on that and we, we would chat and we would, you know, we had fun doing it. We actually had, I had fun doing it. And it was, some of it was a bit challenging because I had never done that kind of thing. And, you know, to put, to place the, the, the I, I did it in watercolor and I, and I, I didn't have that much experience with the watercolor. So I had to brush up on that, I'd brush up. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so anyways, it, it was fun. And I, I, I'm sure, sure glad that we did it together. And, uh, we, we, we did another project together because I, I do uh, sculptures with uh, cardboard pieces, cardboard models, and uh, <clears throat> they're, some of them are quite huge. And uh, th there was one where I, I built this, this, uh, gu this guitar store made out of cardboard, recycled cardboard, and David inserted me into the, like as if I was a miniature person building these cardboards, building the cardboard store. So that was another little project we did on the side. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Um, yeah. I have a couple of questions in the comments here. Um, let's see, David, what was the most, um, wait, sorry, did I lose that? Oh, sorry, I scrolled down. Uh, David, what was the most challenging photo to integrate with the gnomes? Uh, I would say it was the one of the construction of the library okay. because there's there's two kind of ropes coming off the gnome shovel and they have to match exactly with the position of the arms uh, and we that took a couple of tries because I would take a black and white sketch from Michelle and I'd blend it in and see if everything aligned and in that in that particular picture the first time through the ropes didn't align where I needed them so I would get back to Michelle and I said, could you raise this arm a little bit and this arm to the right? And he did that and I reintegrated and it was perfect. So, but it, that took a couple of tries to get that right. Some were very easy, some were harder. That was about the hardest, I think. Okay. Um, and uh, Susan also has a question for Michelle. 
A similar question for you, Michelle, which gnome was the most challenging to draw? <laughs> uh, in the sense they all were because, uh, because, uh, because of the constraint that I was working with, it, it has to match a scene that's already existing. Uh, but the fun part was doing the expressions because I, you know what, doing the expression that I found out uh, very quickly that uh, expression all, uh, can also come from the face, but also from the hands. So, so if you if you watch, if you go to the show and, and see the show and see the, the gnomes, you'll notice that the hands are very important expressing uh, different feelings. Yeah. Okay. Um, and our next question is from Peter and he says, hello, David and Michelle, love the pictures, great collaboration. Any plans for future collaborations? <laughs> Have we started something you, you, here? You, you never know, you never know. Well, yeah, most... you never know. <laughs> I, you know what, a lot of times I think of, of, of that project that I'd like to go with, do with David uh, another time, but uh, it, it'll probably it'll probably happen again. It'll probably happen again. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good one. Um, so let me see here. Um, the uh, another question I have is uh, for each of you: What was your favorite part about making this series? So, David, you can go first. Um, I I guess well. I'm just extracting the object and blending it into the new environment. I mean, that, that's just a, a fun process for me. I love to do that. And uh, so that anytime I'm blending one object into another environment, I love it. So I like the challenge of that. Okay. Um, and Michelle? Well, for me, uh, the, the making these characters, I got attached to them. You know, I really got attached to them because as you know, that I, 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 all the originals were, were given to the gallery for, for fundraising. And, but the day that I went and mailed it, I, I was quite sad to see them go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that um, when you've uh, created a character and infused it with life, it must be difficult to let go. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was difficult to let it go. But and I said, oh, maybe, I, maybe I shouldn't have given it away. Maybe I should just keep it in a box in the closet here, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad I gave them away. That's you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, we have a question from Don from uh, who is on Facebook, and it's where do the gnomes go on vacation? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that one was might be well for you, David. <laughs> well, Michelle, you handle that one. You're a gnome expert. Well, well what do you mean? Like, wh where do they go when they go on vacation? Yes. Well, they go to the Maritimes. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's a simple answer. Um, but, and uh, I have, I have um, my gallery assistant Natalie is um, helping this evening, so she's helping me keep track of when uh, when questions come in because sometimes I can't see them all here. So thanks, Natalie. <laughs> Send me any more. Um, another question that I have is. Um, what was the dynamic like making a body of work virtually rather than being able to um, meet in person or work desk side by side the way you would in, you know, a, a creative office of some sort? Um, well, well, to me, there was, it was, there was no difference okay. that if David would have, you know, even if I think that we were of work in the city, it'd be in the same city, we couldn't meet each other anyways. No. And uh, I do music too. And I had a collaborated on a, 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 song, a songwriter and we did two albums last year. Wow. I played music and I did the editing and, and, uh, and uh, the, the mastering of these two things. And uh, I never went to his place and he'd never come here. I've never seen them. I, I, I met him to do it the first time before COVID hit, but then he, he wanted to do a project. And I said, well, he's going to do it online then. So to me, it was, it was very simple in the sense that 
you know, I had to do, uh, we had to, to establish like, you know, same with the gnomes I had to establish, you know, how the files were going to work and, uh-huh. and that kind of thing. But uh, that was easy to do. I had experience with that. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, David, did you find any difference working um, virtually as opposed to um, in person? No, I would say not. I, I'm just so used to working on the computer myself in the Photoshop and interacting with the world via email. And uh, so I was very, yeah, it just felt very natural. I didn't miss, you know, I, I, in this way, I think it was maybe more efficient because we got together. Maybe we'd, you know, spend time talking and wasting time, <laughs> <laughs> having fun and you yeah, know, maybe right. we wouldn't get anything done, but this was very efficient. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Don also wants to know if this could turn into a book one day. Oh, that's, yeah, that's interesting. I've been thinking about that. It would be uh, fun to do that, actually. I, I think it should be, I think it should be a book at one point. Uh, I mean, the material is all there. And David, you've written all the little stories that go along with it and everything. So I, I think it could be, it could be uh, easily done. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think it might be something your grandchildren would like, David. Oh, they'd love <laughs> yeah. that. Yes, they would. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, to turn the pages on a book as opposed to just being able to look at the pictures on the wall. They would yeah. enjoy yeah. that. Yeah, very different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it could also be a virtual book because uh, the virtual books now uh, contain illustrations in it and you flip the pages like you were a regular book. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Peter it has... Um, said, uh, I know a lot of time and effort by both of you went into this. Approximately how long did it take to do these? That's a good question. See, well, I mean, the, the project was very evolved over, you know, maybe two years from beginning to end, yeah. but we weren't working on it all that time. And like Michelle, you and I, when we started working together, was what about two or three months we worked together, would you say? I, I think it was about two or three months that we worked together to do this project. Uh, I know that I worked on it every day for probably three or four hours a day, like during the week, the weekends, I didn't work on it. And a lot of people always, you know, uh, ask that question to artists, how long does it take to do that? And uh, in a sense, you get lost in it and it doesn't take any time at all. <laughs> <laughs> True. Sure. Um, Now, uh, I have to tell you that Lionel Bourgeois or Bourgeois has said that uh, your answer about the vacation location, Michelle, was a uh, good answer. Yeah. (laughs) The Maritimes. Yeah. 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 I know who he is. (laughs) That was was a good response. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, let me see what I have missed here. Um, so actually this, I'd like to take this time because we've individually talked about uh, projects you're planning in the, the future, not necessarily collaborating with each other, but David, um, Michelle, do you each want to talk a, a little bit to things that you're working on or will be working on next? Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I'm doing these cardboard. I have been doing them cardboard sculptures, models, and there's always a theme about guitars in it. And like, a, there's a guitar store. Uh, there's, there's diff- actually, I've got one right here if I can show it. Hmm. It's made out of recycled cardboard. That's very cool. Oh so I have God. I have about 11 models made up now, but I guess, you know, someday there will probably be a show, but uh, uh, I still make, I, I still make, I have to make some more. And one of the guitars is, they're all miniature guitars. And, uh, but I did a giant miniature of the miniature. It's always the same miniature, but I did a giant one. It's, it's eight feet high. So I've been photographing it in different locations. So that would be part of the show also. <laughs> and and plus the, the, the one that David min, min, miniature, miniature, he made me into a miniature where I'm working on these tiny models. 
and uh, and then and and you know this is good. This is going to be part of that show probably also. I don't know where yet, but. Uh, um, Don made a comment that yes, the gnomes took over your kitchen from Monday to Friday. <laughs> oh yes, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. David, you had mentioned something about a project you were working on, and I don't think you touched on it in the artist talk, um, mm -hmm. your next idea. My, my next idea, so I'm working on this project about dinosaurs, and this is showing you the world and all over the world what life would be like if dinosaurs were still alive. And so what I had to do was I photographed the miniature dinosaurs, and because I would be positioning them in all different locations around the world, I had to create a 3D model. So I had to learn all about 3D modeling. And I used a program where you take the miniature dinosaur and you photograph it from many different heights in many directions. And then you run a program called Metashape, which takes all those two dimensional pictures and creates one three dimensional object. So that took almost a year to do that. And I, once I had the models, then I placed them in scenes around the world. And it's kind of, it's like living with bears or coyotes or cougars. You, you have to watch out for some dinosaurs. They are very dangerous. Others are quite friendly. And uh, you know, my, my granddaughter can feed them um, a Brachiosaurus off of her balcony. And there's no risk, it'll never bite her. But you know, the T-Rex, you don't want to run to meet a T-Rex on the way to Rocky Point on the path. So the, the show deals with all those kind of things. It's almost finished. It, uh, it was a big project, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Now, I think on the topic of um, next projects, uh, Don has said uh, the gnomes in cardboard land, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was a that was a good response. Um, well, at this point, I think we've um, talked about all the questions, and uh, I just wondered if you wanted to. You can have a moment to talk to your friends and family. Um, say, you know, if I'm sure they had to uh, support you in many ways. <laughs> During this. Yeah, especially if you were they were trying to cook and couldn't yeah. eat in the kitchen. Especially when your studios, especially when your studios in the kitchen and you <laughs> you're running out of space in the closet. Like we live in an apartment, and all these cardboard cardboard uh, projects are starting to take a lot of room. <laughs> Actually, I have two pieces at a friend's house in his basement too. <laughs> Uh, the eight-foot miniature guitar, yeah, I yeah, hope, the eight is foot over miniature there. guitar is, is at his house. And it, it's in two pieces. It's in two pieces in a big box. I just don't know how an eight-foot guitar could be uh, considered yeah. a miniature. <laughs> well, this is this is what they look like in real life. Oh, I mean, okay. I mean, this this is the size of the cardboards. Yeah, that one's but a miniature. The, yeah, that's a miniature. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eight feet might be a little above that yeah. classification. Yeah. Um, oh, did you? Anyway, I'll let you. Well, people, people can that. see. People could see. They go. They can go to my link uh, on 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 uh, the on the Pomo Art uh, website. Uh, yeah. There's a profile on on, and you can find my website there and go see some of these some of these uh, cardboard projects that have been started. Yes, each of, each of the artists has an artist directory profile. Plus, I know Natalie's posted the link to um, the digital gallery on yeah. the on the website, so you can actually scroll through and see the exhibition and see artwork uh, images in the gallery as well as the actual artwork images. And um, if you, especially if you're not living in the Lower Mainland where you can come and visit. Um, it is open, we're an in-person gallery uh, exhibition and uh, following COVID protocols and we are open seven days a week. So check out the website for our times that you can come and visit. Uh, David was here yesterday with his family, his grandchildren, and uh, it was nice to see them in the gallery. 
Silas, the three-year-old, loved the uh, ceramics in the other room. He, he looked a bit at the uh, gnomes, but he was always running in to check out the ceramics. So he found that <laughs> very exciting. Well, we have <laughs> ceramics classes for children, <laughs> family ceramics, uh, family classes too. So oh, okay. might be something as he gets older that uh, grandpa can bring him to a class. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to thank you both for being here this evening and um, for uh, working so hard on us with the Artist Talk video. We were trying to find a way that um, both artists could uh, participate in this in a meaningful way. Um, and since uh, Michelle wasn't able to be here and be in the gallery for a live from the gallery artist talk, uh, we decided to try a collaborative um, video project to do it. And uh, I think it worked out well. And I really appreciate that both of the artists were able to help us with that. Mm -hmm. So- um, well, Thank you, Janice, for all your support and help yeah. in this and setting up the show you did. A beautiful job of it all so thank you very much yeah yeah well, thank you very much yeah well thank you i i appreciate that you were both able to participate in this and and um as david mentioned his work is uh the work is for sale and um the uh and they're donating it all, the artist proceeds are all going to share society in the Tri-Cities. And um, then um, Michelle has donated the original gnome drawings and they will uh, be for sale a little bit later in uh, this year and um, uh, available. And the proceeds of that, it was a fun donated as a fundraiser for Pomo Arts, which was very generous, Michelle. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, I uh, was happy to have you both here this evening. It's getting a bit later for Michelle and um, <laughs> well, two hours difference. Not, oh, it's not bad. Not I'm five minutes into my bedtime. Okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess we'll just move this along. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, we always appreciate uh, the visitors that come to the gallery and those that watch on these virtual events that we've now been doing for about 18 months. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And we'll see you when we have our next virtual opening reception on September 23rd right here on uh, Facebook. Thank you very much. Good evening. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye.